Wow, more than six months. Yeah. That's so cool. So cool. Very nice. And do you have any questions um, about, about the grammar there? Did you see anything new? Uh, for this week, I prepared one grammar topic. Yeah. It's, uh, but I mean, I mean Duolingo. At Duolingo. No. No. Duolingo, nothing. No. No. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see what you did. Let's start with grammar. Oh, this is for next week. Yeah. For <laughs> okay. Next week, so. Cool. So for today, for today, modal verbs, right? So yeah. this is the modal verb month. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you practice this week. Okay. So last week we talked about modal verbs that I use to express abilities. So we talked about can, could, was, were able to, and managed to. Yeah. So for today's grammar topic, I chose modal verbs that I, that I use to express possibilities. Uh -huh. So we are going to talk about can, could, may, and might. Okay. So. Let's get started. Okay, uh, we can use can, can not can, but could, might, might, may, and might to express possibilities, but in present and future. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I put here some examples in present and future. Mm -hmm. They could be brothers. They look so like present. Mm -hmm. Where are my keys? They might still be in the car. Present. Mm -hmm. It could cost more than you expect future, and I may be around five minutes later, late, future. So in these four cases here, we can use both, both of them. For example, I can use uh, may, might, or could. So I can also say they may be brothers or they might be brothers. So in that cases, it's okay to use any of them, mm -hmm. but it's very important to us to pay attention because sometimes only the contest will show us if it is a if it is an is it is a present or a future possibility. Yeah. So she might be there already. Uh huh. She might be there tomorrow. Future. Exactly. Yes. So. So. Yeah. Context. Mm -hmm. In this case here, you have the words. For example, tomorrow. This is mm -hmm. obviously, you're obviously talking about the future here, but um, other things count as context too. It's not just the words. The words help a lot, <laughs> a lot, but also the, you know, other uh, non-language related cues, yeah. right? Can help us too, okay? Because, um, but the important thing is to expand your mind and understand that these uh, modal verbs that you chose here can be used to talk about the future, for example, that uh, people sometimes feel confused about, right? Yeah. So they say, oh, but could is the past of can. How can it refer to, to the future? But it can. It can refer yeah. to the future, right? Yeah. And also that the difference between may and might is very small. Do you remember? Actually, but... Uh, low. Here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, that some native speakers mm. have um, used these three modal verbs in different ways because uh, they consider that these three words can express different levels of certainty. So, uh, may is more express a higher level and could and might less level. So, uh, for example, the restaurant may close. So in that case, it is like that the restaurant will close. The restaurant restaurant could close. It is less like that the restaurant will close mm -hmm. and the restaurant might close. There is only a possibility that the restaurant will close, but not no one is very sure. Mm -hmm. But I also read uh -huh. on Cambridge website uh -huh. that uh, n not even the native speakers agreed with that yes. uh, explanation. So, yeah. <laughs> for example, for me, could uh -huh. is more uh, exp express more certainty than may. So, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you're right. You're right. So. Yeah, and uh, because of that, you might find different explanations on different sites. But uh, I can see some sense here in the level of certainty. It may is more certain than could, and which is uh, on its turn more certain than might. But again, it depends on the context, depends on what you're saying, and things are very complex and delicate. The important thing is to know the basic idea and do yeah. the best you can to express yourself in a good way and to understand other people right but this this is helpful too this is nice okay so uh, now uh, we can also have negative possibilities mm -hmm. but in that case we only use may and might we can't mm -hmm. use could mm -hmm. so here are some examples they might not be ready he may not be able to help you. Yeah. So, in that case, we need to pay attention only in that. So, we can. Yeah, we cannot you. use could nor can, right? Neither. Yeah. Just may or might in the negative form, yes. So, Very. Mm. we use can for general possibilities. So, mm -hmm. what means a general possibility? So, when it is related to many peoples or in it occurs many places at many times mm -hmm. and so on i put here three examples mm -hmm. so okay. the first one it can take two hours to get the airport if the traffic is bad uh -huh. so it's it oh uh, it um it doesn't depend on the time so it can the traffic can be bad in the morning or in the afternoon, whatever. So uh -huh. it isn't in a specific time in that case. Uh -huh. uh, the second, it can be very wet and cold in spring here. So uh -huh. I can be talking about the spring of this year or the next year and so on. It's uh -huh. general. And he can be very difficult to deal with when he's in a bad mood. So uh, people can. Uh, be in a bad mood in, uh, today, tomorrow, and you know. Yeah, I think the idea here is that it can means it's possible. There is a possibility that you can take up to two hours to get to the airport. So it's not exactly two hours, but there is a possibility. Depending, like generally speaking, it's possible that you will take two hours to get to the airport. It's possible that the spring here will be very wet and cold. And it's also possible that he uh, can be, that he, uh, it, it is difficult to deal with him. Like it's, it's not a definite situation. So you understand, right? Yeah. These are the, the points that vary. This is important. What varies? What is the variation about? The duration here, uh, how wet the spring can get here, and how difficult he can be. There is a variation in degree, and can shows it here by generalizing. Right? That's the idea. Do you understand? Is it clear? Yeah. yeah? Uh -huh. Any other comments about this part? No, that's it. Okay. Uh, Specific possibilities, uh -huh. uh, as I told you, we, you use may, might, and could. So yeah. it might, may, could be hot tomorrow. She might, may, could be quite angry when she finds out. Yeah. Why are these two sentences specific? Why are we? Uh, what word shows us that we are talking about something specific? A specific possibility. Here, the first example. case tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Uh huh. And, and the second, uh, when she finds out, because exactly. Uh. Yeah. Because. Because it's in the future, right? I am predicting the future. Oh, when she. Yeah. Finds yeah. Out. This is this is not just any time. It's when she finds out. It's specifying the situation. It's different from here. These situations are not specified. They are general. Okay, because oh. it depends here. Here you have an average. 
it ver there is a variation. But here, no, here I'm talking about tomorrow specifically and when she finds out specifically. Yeah. Right? Is there a specific point in the future? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Okay. All right, what else? So now, yeah, mm -hmm. possibilities in the past. In that case, we need to use the structure could or might or may plus have plus past participle. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about possibilities in the past, we can have two situations. The first situation is when we already know what happened. Uh -huh. So it was a possibility. And I put two examples. She could have lost all of her money when the company went under. Ah, I learned that. I heard that uh, this week during one uh, of my Cambly classes. <laughs> uh. Uh, in that case, I know that she didn't lose her money. I'm just, I know it was a possibility. It could be, of course, you know. The second, of course, being an accident was scary, but it could have been worse. So in that case, uh, I am just telling that it was a possibility to be worse, so... Yeah, so what shows us in these two sentences that we already know what happened? Here, for example, what shows us that we know what happened? Because, uh, da, da. What is the part, the part that we know, the, the piece of information that we know? Uh, in that case, because company went under, is exactly. in the past. Right? Yes, so this happened for sure. This mm -hmm. happened for sure. And this is a possibility. She could have lost all her money. This is the possibility. And here, uh, what is the part that we know for sure? Uh, the, the accident was scary. Yes, and being in an accident was scary too, right? But the possibility, the possibility is... Could have it been worse. Could have been worse, yes. Okay, and the second situation? The second situation is when we don't know what happened, we only guess. So, this is still a possibility. Yes. Uh, where is he? I guess he might have missed the train. Very good. I don't know where the tickets are. I might have left them in the hotel. Yeah, I may. I may have left them hey, in the hotel. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good job. Uh, so here, we don't know. We are asking a question mm -hmm. here. Where is he? We don't know. And here, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where the tickets are. So here, the it's, it's still a possibility. This is a possibility, right? Yeah. I guess he might have missed the train or something else might have happened. Or I may have left them in the hotel or somewhere else. Excellent. Any comments, questions about this part? That's it. That's it? Okay. Then you studied something else. Difference yeah. between studying rather than. Okay. Because Start I off. always uh, get confu got confused about when uh, how to use instead of and rather than. So, okay. basically, uh, these two examples, instead uh, uh, of and rather than, Means the means the same thing. So mm -hmm. in Portuguese, I'll invest it. Invest it. So here the example: She wants to buy a house instead of a car. She wants to buy a house rather than a car. So in okay. that case specific, uh, instead of in rather than, uh, are at the end of the sentence. So it's very simple to use. But when instead of or rather than comes in the middle of the sentence or ah. at the beginning, we need to pay attention because the structure changes. Ah, so, okay, 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 okay. I, so here, just, just to, so here the meaning is the same, right? It means the same. Yeah. And it's important to see that it's followed by a noun, right? It's followed by a noun. Instead of a car, instead of a uh, of this time, instead of a place, instead of something, or rather than a car, so on and so forth. But when you say, uh, depending on which of them we are using, the sentence structure can change. So what? how can it change? Uh, when they are followed by verbs. So instead of, we, 
for example, instead of waiting, I decided to go home by taxi. Yeah. In that case, instead of requires the ing form of the verb, mm. and rather than mm -hmm. wait, I decided to go home by taxi. Rather than requires the infinitive form of the verb. So okay. So what you are saying is that when it's followed by a noun. It's just a noun. It's it works the same for both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if it's followed by a verb, then yeah. you need to use ing form after instead of, and yeah. uh, infinitive bear infinitive after rather than, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just a tip here. Of is a preposition, and every single time we put a verb after a preposition, we do this every single time so this might help okay okay mm -hmm. uh, and in this case here rather than it will never be followed by ing and never be followed by a to infinitive you cannot say rather than to wait mm -hmm. it doesn't work right and probably you've you've been listening to a lot of english lately it sound you can feel that it sounds strange right when we say rather rather than to wait or rather than waiting doesn't sound good so it helps by contrast yeah. if you're in doubt mm -hmm. you can do that contrast and find the right a way to do it so wait all right now vocabulary vocabulary yeah. vocabulary uh, uh just a, just a, mm -hmm. our pronunciation okay <laughs> all right yeah i okay. think i should add this is a good a good point because I always put grammar, pronunciation, and stories, but I should add vocabulary. This is a good point. Well, let's see. Where difference between where or how to use where put on and dress? Okay. okay. So first, where mm -hmm. uh, we it's very difficult to understand. Mm. It's more easy to visualize the process, but I will try to explain. Okay. Uh, where where we use the this verb to express. Um, to describe the style or type of clothes that someone is wearing in a specific uh -huh. mo moment. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. wear is also used to it make up or import jewelry, hairstyle, and accessories. Yeah. So, there's the examples. I'm wearing a blue t-shirt and jeans. Mm -hmm. Lucas used to wear long hair when he was a teenager. Yeah, so he can use wear with hair. Hairstyle, right? Hairstyle. Yeah. It's interesting. And, uh, however, uh, it's very important to pay attention because mm -hmm. where it can be used when something becomes used or weaker over time. So, in that case, we use the phrase of verb wear out. Yes. So, my boots are ge getting worn out. Worn out. Are getting worn out. Yeah. Worn out. But, <laughs> worn out yeah. can also mean... Get tired. Get tired. Which is kind of related because it's like we're yeah. being, you, our energy is gone, right? Our energy uh -huh. is gone, we're, we feel weaker. We can say that I'm worn out at the end of the day. Oh, I feel worn out. I'm worn out. Really yeah. great. I, I think you should add next, for next class maybe, the verb use. use. Because this is the mistake we make, we Brazilians make. This is the first verb we use when we want to talk about clothes. Yeah. Uh, the verb to use. Mm -hmm. And it's not right. So the right words are these, wear, put on and dress. But we need to learn when to use the word use, the verb use. Because it's not in this case, not in this context. Mm -hmm. It's a different uh, kind of context. So when we are talking about clothes, e including Makeup, jewelry, hairstyle, and accessories. It's wear, like you said. Mm -hmm. What else? But, what well, So, we, we use it uh, for the action, mm -hmm. the reaction of um, putting something on your body. Yes. So, in that case, you are doing the action. So, yes. the examples. Wait a minute, I'm just putting my shoes on. Uh -huh. She put on her makeup and went out went out. So, in that case, we also can use uh, put on with makeup, but it's a specific time here. So, it's kind of, you are applying the makeup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and then you will wear the makeup you walking away with that makeup on your face with that clothes on your body so yes, yes. so that put, put on shows a change of states First, you are wearing no clothes after a bath, for example, and then uh -huh. you put on your clothes and now you are wearing Sorry. clothes. And then there is another change of, of state here, right? Yeah, put off. Put off. Okay. So here mm -hmm. you're changing a state. No clothes, clothes. Here, clothes. And here, clothes, no clothes. What about dress? So, dress. Uh, is the act of putting the clothes on your body or the style that someone wears. So uh -huh. she dresses in a way that lets everyone know she's got authority. Uh -huh. He told the Sandra to wait while he dressed. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, here it's used as uh, meaning put on. Mm -hmm. For example, I can say he told Sandra to wait while he was putting his clothes <laughs> on. Yeah. And here it's about the style. In what way does he dress? Does she dress? Right. Mm -hmm. What about these two other phrases that you learned? Dress wounds. So uh -huh. it's when, for example, you have a wound in your arm, you need mm -hmm. to clear it and then cover it with a bandage. Ba bandage. bandage. Very good. Very good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it dress salad. Uh huh. It's the act of put oil and vin vinegar. Uh -huh. on it. So. Yes. Yes, and the, we have for example salad dressing. Salad dressing. Salad dressing is not just oil and vinegar. That's the basic uh, thing we put on a, on a salad, but you can make many combinations. These are for example eight healthy salad dressings. And then you can add a lot of stuff like yogurt, balsamic, tahini, <laughs> and so but, on so forth. Okay? Uh, they are Liquid, right? Le Green. Yes, 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 yes. So we don't call, the thing is, we don't call this sauce. Because in Portuguese we say molho de salada. Yes. But in English yes. it's dressing, right? Dressing. If you're eating pasta, for example, then you say sauce. Actually, if you're eating anything else, you say sauce. Chicken with sauce, um, I don't know, pasta with sauce, and then you describe the sauce. But if you're talking about a salad, it's, we use the word dressing, right? So here mm -hmm. we have uh, with vinegar, we have French dressing, Italian dressing, um, all kinds of, of stuff. And the vinaigrette, what they call vinaigrette is different from our vinaigrette, okay? Do you know mm -hmm. when we make barbecue and we say, oh, I'm going to prepare the vinaigrette. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that vinaigrette is diff our vinaigrette for the barbecue that is a side dish for the barbecue is different from this vinaigrette here. A vinaigrette is kind of a dressing, okay? It's a salad dressing. It's a mix of oil and mustard, I don't know. This is a vinaigrette dressing, this. This is vinaigrette in English, okay? What we eat, I forgot. I did a search a while ago and I don't remember anymore. I need to search again. Very good. Anything else about this part? That's it. That's it. What about pronunciation? So, pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, I, I, I'm also studying the T sounds, the American T sound. And for this week, uh -huh. I watched a video from by Hader. So, in that video, it, it was about the true T. And uh, the thing that I uh, think that is very important is the uh -huh. aspiration because sometimes mm. we forgot to do it. For example, we my forget, name. we forget. Yeah. Taina, I don't make the aspiration. Taina, <laughs> true. We tend, we, we want to say true. So yeah, it's, yeah. So it's when we you first learn the sounds. You was, I told you, oh, this is like in Portuguese, because then it makes it simpler to start with. But now that you're going deeper and deeper and deeper into the sounds, you notice something very important. This is different. This, the, the sounds are actually different from the Portuguese sounds, right? The aspiration is a big difference. So p, k, t, right? 
Yeah. A burst of air, exactly. There is a burst of air that we don't have in Portuguese. Right? Mm -hmm. Nice. I put here some example words. Okay. Time, task, took, to, to, totally, terrible, internal, fantastic, atomic, potential. And Excellent. Again, I chose some words from the tests that I had read during the week and mm -hmm. tried to classify which kind of tea sound mm -hmm. was. So first percent mm -hmm. that person percent. that is a glottal stop because the T is at the end of the word. Yeah, glottal, Eight, glottal stop. Glottal stop. Mm -hmm. 80 is a flap T because the T is between two vowel sounds. 80, uh huh. Uh, effective, it's a true T because the yeah. T is in a cluster, the CT cluster. Uh -huh. Percentage, the vanishing T. Okay, I told you in the last week that I hate the vanishing T, but in uh -huh. that case, it suits well. Percentage. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're getting familiarized with the words and this phenomenon, the, the vanishing T <laughs> percentage. But <laughs> it's funny, Taina, uh, because the vanishing T exists in certain communities of speakers. It's not everyone. A lot of people will, so, will say percentage, percentage. Okay, so you you don't. It's you can choose what you're going to how you're going to say this word. I think it's nice to learn all the possible ways to pronounce a word. I think it's nice to to master, for example, percentage. It's nice to learn how to say it. Some people might not like it, <laughs> some people <laughs> might not care. So you, if you know how to pronounce it, the word in different ways, you can test it out and see how the other person feels about how you're pronouncing the words. And you can change the, your pronunciation in a way that suits the context, right? So mm -hmm. it's really cool that you're practicing this. And I love this chart, it, this kind of practice you're doing to try to identify what kind of T sound uh, the word has. That's really cool. Oh, there is more. Let's continue. Skepticism. So it's a true T because the T is in a cluster. Uh -huh. Prevent. Lot of stop. T at the end of the word. Okay, this is hard. Yeah. Recent, recently. Recently. Lot of, recently. <laughs> lot of stop. Yeah. Uh, he hesitancy. This uh -huh. is hard also. Flap T, outside, lot of stop, uh -huh. because the T is at the end of a syllable and the next syllable begins with a consonant sound, outside, uh -huh. and contempt, true T. The two T's are, are true. true. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Tainá, did we talk about Tim's pronunciation workshop? I don't remember what we said about that se series, Tim's. Do you remember? I, Did you watch I, those videos? I watched some videos, not... Ah, ah okay, so you watched some videos and then you decided to do something else, right? Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Because he explains some of these phenomena that happens when we say a sentence and how a word affects the other word, the next word or something. So he talks about that. It could be interesting to watch the other videos. Were you following the sequence or you just picked random videos? I was following the, se the, the sequence. sequence. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You might think about it. Think about mm -hmm. um, watching the whole series. It might be interesting. It might add to your uh, knowledge anyway, okay? All right, no more comments about this? No, no. Okay. That's... All right, so now image description. So what did, let me just take a look here. You wrote uh, text and the stories, okay. Podcast, nice and uh, nice, okay. So let's go on with the image description. Um, read? Yeah, to read. Uh, yeah. The picture shows a woman and two children cooking together. Uh -huh. In the foreground, there is a table covered with different types of vegetables. On the right, there is a little boy eating a piece of cucumber. On the left, there is a girl looking at some chopped vegetables. Uh 
-huh. The woman is standing in the middle with a chopping board in her hand. Mm -hmm. The vegetables are colorful and look fresh. Mm -hmm. Some of them are carrots, tomatoes, lettuce, red cabbage, garlic, eggplants, tom tomatoes again, <laughs> potatoes, Potato, potatoes, potatoes, and bell peppers. Ah, yes. The woman may be the mother of those children. And she might have been teaching them the name of vegetables and how they taste. Mm -hmm. This picture could have been taken to a propaganda about some product, or it might be only a family's photograph. Very nice. Very nice. Only if so new words, right? You learned some verbs related to cooking, some uh, vegetables. You use this very well, what you practice in the grammar, what you learned in the grammar, right? The way to ways to speculate using modal verbs. Uh, here, just the pronunciation of this word. It's a, I always it's a little bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> it is a little bizarre. So let's see the symbols once more because it helps. It helps us remember. So where is the cucumber? Cucumber. cucumber. And it's the first syllable. So this is very common in English. I have a long word, but the strongest syllable is the first. So you have to have breath to say it until the end so it's cucumber cucumber yeah <laughs> there you go cucumber um here uh, uh, it's not wrong but another way to say this instead of saying some of them you could say like the vegetables are colorful and look fresh mm -hmm. they include they include oh. carrots tomatoes lettuce etc Okay, mm -hmm. this is not wrong. It's just uh, uh, some another way to say this. Okay. And here, the last paragraph, this picture mm -hmm. could have been taken uh, for. For, for, yeah. Right? For. for. Because this is the purpose mm -hmm. of the, that you're guessing. And propaganda is not the best word because propaganda has a different meaning. Mm -hmm. Let me just show here what it means. Propaganda meaning. It's uh, it's usually information that tries to convince people of something, tries to promote or publicize a particular political cause. So the idea is the same. It's something that uh, it's information. A nossa propaganda, né? It's information mm -hmm. that tries to convince people to buy a product. But in the case of the word propaganda, it's it has uh, it serves a political cause. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has to to do with politics. So propaganda, advertisement. I, I, yeah, yes, yes. I think it would uh, be advertisement. Better. Probably. Let's see if the, uh, add, you can shorten it and say add, okay? Add. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have advertising, adverti uh, advertisement, or commercial. If it's on TV, it's a commercial. If it's, so here, it would be better to say, be taken, uh, it could have been taken for an ad, okay? Mm -hmm. For an ad. Advertisement about some product, or it might be simply. I would say simply. If your idea is to say there is no uh, big uh, objective behind it, simply mm -hmm. only is okay, but simply is an option. Okay, simply a family's photograph. Nice. That's it. What's wrong with an ad? I'm going to leave advertisement. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't understand what I... But it's an advertisement. Or simply add like that. For advertisement. What's wrong with this word? The spelling? Okay. All right? Mm-hmm. Very good. Any questions, comments? Uh, the only comment is, oh my God, repolho roxo in English is red cabbage. 
red cabbage. That's right. It's not purple. <laughs> yeah, I when I was uh, writing the test, I wrote purple cabbage, but <laughs> I thought, oh, it might be wrong. Let's check on Google. Yes, always check. And you, did you use Google Images? Yeah. It helps, right? Like I always say, it helps. So the, the cabbage is purple, but we call it red for, for, for some reason. English doesn't make sense sometimes. Doesn't make sense at all, yes. Tomatoes are red. Look at the difference, right? Yeah. The tomatoes and the, the cabbage. Very nice. So let's talk about the stories now. Yeah. News and levels. Uh, first, I will read the test and then you so can tell me something about my pronunciation. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Are you following with me? Because yeah. Let me, let me, okay, so let me do this. I think it's better this way. Okay. British researchers surveyed over 140,000 people in over 140 countries to learn their opinions on vaccines. Overall, 80% of people said that vaccines are safe and 84% said that they are effective. Mm -hmm. However, poor countries are more certain about vaccines than richer countries. France had the lowest percentage of people who trust vaccines and North America had 72%. Mm -hmm. The researchers say that vaccine skepticism is higher where vaccines used to prevent diseases that recently have come back. Mm -hmm. This is because less people there are giving the vaccines to their children. The WHO said that vaccine has hesitancy is one of the top 10 problems in the mm. global health this year. Mm -hmm. The researchers want to continue studying this issue. Pronunciation is great. You practice a lot, right? Yeah. Actually, your pronunciation is already good, so it wasn't, it didn't, it shouldn't have taken you so long to practice. Just a few times. Did you use um, two phonetics? Yeah. Yeah. Everything, Everything is on, on point. Everything is on point. Really great job. The numbers, the new words. Very nice. So, um, what do you think? What is your opinion? So, actually, tell me again this the main ideas, the main points, using your words, what does the text say? Okay, so the test is um, telling us about this uh, kind of, I, I would say, uh, bad behavior of yeah, some... Bad trend, bad tendency. Trend. Yeah, bad behavior, yeah. Of some people, of some parents that mm -hmm. are are not, uh, it's give or take, I don't know, give vaccines. Yeah. Yeah, that this are, is a good question. Give or take. For as if I take a vaccine to, no, to, or I get a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> yes, I, I need to check that. <laughs> Let's check that. Well, tell me more and then I'll try to find out. Okay, so because in some countries, and as the test told us, many the richer countries, people are not um, taking or getting vaccines. It says, uh, ah, okay, get, get, because get. they say shot, get a shot, get a flu shot, because shot is the same as a vaccine. And vaccine, I think it refers more to the, the contents. And shot is the action. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you can say get a shot, for example. This is my vaccine. Let me just take a look at this. Do I need to get in vaccination? Get vaccinated, I think. Okay, to get vaccinated. So in that countries were not getting vaccinated. Yeah. And this is a huge problem because the vaccine only works when a good, a good number of people are uh, vaccinated. And this is the purpose of vaccines. Mm -hmm. Try to um, immune, 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 immune system. No, immunize, immunize, immunize. <laughs> immunize. <laughs> okay. 
E milionário ou não? É, é, receber imunização? Ficar imunizado? Imuni? Immunized. Immunized. To get immunized. Yeah. Um, a lot of people because so this is the goal. Uh, oh. Yeah. Try to make the virus. Virus. I'm checking the pronunciation. Virus. Yes. Virus. Virus. Try to um, to take the virus, not take away from you know the societies, the countries, but to stop the progress, the spreading of the disease. So. Ah, okay, I got it here, the difference. Yes, that's the difference. So the vaccine is the fluid, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to copy this for you here, is the fluid. And the vaccination is the shot you get. Oh, my computer is weird. Is the... Ah. <laughs> Is the shot you get. The shot is the same as vaccination. So here. So a nurse could say, we can start giving vaccinations now. So give vaccination. Give vaccination. Mm -hmm. And there is a vaccination. We say a vaccination clinic. I got vaccine. Nation clinic. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's it's important, and a lot of people are not vaccinating their children, their babies. Yeah. And it's funny because this is happening in rich countries, in the yeah. U.S., in France, and in the poor countries. Where is it? The poorer countries are more certain about vaccines than richer countries. This is so crazy, right? Yeah, very crazy. I don't know. I think that's because people think that, oh, people who live in poor countries, they have less education, so they are more susceptible to uh, doing what doctors tell them to do. They have no agency, like, something like that. <laughs> And in richer countries, people dispute. They think they have. They are supposed. They supposedly have education, and they just start. They start disputing what doctors tell them because they have more access to information online, and they have more access to fake news. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Because a, a great deal of um, influence on people is due to fake news I guess it's connected with this why, why is this happening now right in the past a lot of diseases were considered uh, gone I, I forgot the term they use but a lot of diseases that they were under control or they had disappeared now they're coming back because people are simply parents are not vaccinating their babies their children um, and I don't understand why. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. something that, yeah, this is very, this is skepticism, right? This wave of skepticism. And the children are dying. Yeah. <laughs> this is very sad. So these are terms connected with vaccination, which can be confusing. So here you are. And I got it from this site, which is great. I think I've told uh, you about this site, Grammar Girl. It's one of the no. best. No? Also, no. try to follow her, Minion Fogarty, uh, Grammar Girl. Her, she has a podcast. And I think her uh, podcast has uh, transcripts. Hmm. Dumbing down. Why dumbing down your languages and all this? The, the topics are very interesting. She has won a lot of awards for her uh, podcast. She's been around for around 10 years, I think. And I recommend uh, listening to her podcast. You can read the transcripts here online. Okay? So it's mm -hmm. Grammar Girl. All right. Uh, let's see the next one. Next one is a podcast. How to stop worrying. Um, 
uh, do you want to say anything else about the vaccines? No, that's it. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The last topic is about a podcast that I that I studied this week. So it was about um, worry. So how to stop worrying? Mm -hmm. It's difficult because I think that there isn't a path, a quick and easy answer mm -hmm. because everybody has its own problems, its own strategies and it won't, it's, it, you know, it worries, uh, so it's very difficult, difficult. And first, I would like to start talking about how worry can affect us. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can affect us in different ways. For example, some people can get um, uh, physical tension like back pain, migraines, and stomach aches. Stomach uh, ache. Stomach ache. Stomach ache. Yeah. Uh, I personally, when I get anxious or worried about something, my stomach, oh my god, uh, it hurts. It hurts a lot. It's the, <laughs> it's oh, I get a little worried. My stomach. Oh my yeah. god. I think it's the center of our, I don't know, it, I don't know if it's emotion because it should be the heart, but we feel a lot in our stomachs, yes. Yeah, because we when we are anxious or mm -hmm. worried, we yeah. uh, have the tendency to eat uh, not good, see, uh, healthy thing, for example, oh, you yeah, yeah. eat a lot of chocolate yeah. or uh, hamburgers uh -huh. and things that are not healthy in our stomach needs to uh, deal with that <laughs> yeah. that, that behavior uh -huh. okay and how people can cope it's a new term cope uh, with to cope, cope with yes cope with worry so mm -hmm. it only depends on the way that you live your life or because for example i when i am worried i try to um, Wind down, I learned it. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, trying to listen to music or trying to clean my house, do the dishes, just to get my mind away from the worries, like, mm -hmm. oh my, the college. The source of worry. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, everybody has its own way to deal with worry. Uh -huh. And uh, why we worry? So it's not easy to understand because uh, the worry can be uh, can occur in different situations in different times in your life. Maybe you are the kind of person that it's always worried about something, and you know it's difficult to tell. Oh, it's that thing that makes you worried, and. Here I put this uh, paragraph from the transcript. So, mm -hmm. rather than feel good and be blindsided with uncomfortable negative emotion, when the other shoe inevitably drops, Very good. Wor warriors can stay in a preferred state of low level distress. It is a protective, even if it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's um, a person that is worried is in a, that that state, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an animal that is trying to protect itself from mm -hmm. the predator. But mm -hmm. we don't have a predator. We mm -hmm. create this in our mind and mm -hmm. try to deal with those situations. And we create this totally uncomfortable uh, lifestyle. Because be worried, worried today is kind of a lifestyle. It Everybody. Is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's difficult, but yeah, we need to try to uh, develop some ability to do with, and when we can't do it by ourselves, we can uh, search for help, mm -hmm. like psychologists and things like that. It's more important to recognize that you are not able to do with this 
own person. Mm -hmm. And at least uh, she told us some strategies, three strategies mm -hmm. to deal with worry. So the first is to make a time to worry. So set aside part of your day to worry. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. It's a good idea. And if you get word in a time, in a different time, you just put off your worries until this time, and probably yeah. you you will forget. Forget, yeah, forget nice. Them. Uh -huh. And the second is to experiment with action, action confident, and decisive. So in that case, uh -huh. for example, oh, you worried about pay some bill, so go and pay it. It's very simple. Just face your worries. Uh -huh. And the third is lean into the worst case scenario. This is very extreme in my opinion. For uh -huh. example, she said, oh, you are worried about uh, in, at the end of your life, you're, you, you are alone in your house, blah, blah. So imagine yourself in that situation and try to create the worst scenario ever. Uh -huh. And then try to do it repeatedly. At some point, your mind will be tired of it. Uh -huh. and Okay. You will not more. Okay, I don't care anymore. You just give up, give yeah. up, and stop worrying about it because it takes so much energy to keep thinking about the worst possible mm -hmm. situation, right? And then your mind just gives up. Yeah, that's interesting. I like it. So that's it. Very nice, Tina. Good job. Yeah, this is a, a more difficult podcast, but you, uh, you did super well here. Really great job. Very nice. So I guess that's it for today. Excellent class. Thank you so much for letting me record the class. <laughs> and yeah. uh, very good. Keep up the good, the excellent work. And remember to check uh, this series out, Tim's Pronunciation Workshop and mm -hmm. Grammar Girl. Take a look at okay. the, her podcast too, okay? Okay. Wonderful. So have a great weekend and I'll see you next class. I'll see you next class. Bye. Bye-bye.